fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! I will still In St. Louis, gilded gaiety sprang from countless brilliantly lighted gambling palaces and ornate cafes. Men sometimes won, but more frequently lost their fortunes. Death was held lightly. Some men were murdered, others took their own lives in desperation. Human life meant little to Hamilton Green the lean-faced, sharp-eyed owner of the most famous of palaces. His huge gambling hall, the Golden Horseshoe, was pointed out by passers-by. Rain up a minute, driver. Stop right here. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, sir. There, kid. I dare say you've never seen the equal of that building, not even in your New York. The Golden Horseshoe. Looks like an old-world castle. The outside is nothing. You should see the interior of the place. What's it like, Jim? Marble halls, golden chairs, crystal chandeliers. The paintings on the walls that came all the way from France. Some of the most magnificent oriental rugs you ever saw. Why, Hamilton Green must have spent millions on the place. I'd love to see the inside. I saw it once, and Father nearly cut me off. I lost $10,000 in less than an hour. You see that balcony on the side, right over the river? Yes. Many a man has dropped dead from there. Murder? Sometimes... Sometimes he takes his own life. No one ever knows or cares. But this uh, fellow, Hamilton Green, you say, what sort is he? Cold, hard, the most ruthless man you ever saw. And the most polite. You might see him about town. He's lean and tall. He has a saber scar on one cheek. Expert swordsman. He'll always welcome a duel with either sword or pistol. But how does he keep people coming if they lose such fortunes there? Kit, he has a singer. She's beautiful. Abby Armour. Mm, Abby Armour, hmm? I saw her once, and I declare I'd willingly lose $10,000 more for one of her smiles. Abby Armour. Well, driver, let's get on. Hmm? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get up there. Get up Everything ready for this evening, gentlemen? Yes, Mr. Green. Good. Well, Mr. Hendricks, how are the plans for our masked ball coming along? Fine and dandy, Mr. Green. It'll sure be a gay time. It'll be good advertising. The most exclusive crowd. 
All of them heavy spenders. Yes, sir. Where is Miss Abby? She wanted to speak to me. Waiting in your office, Mr. Green. I sure hope she doesn't leave here. We'd lose a lot of our customers. Customers? Oh, no, no, Mr. Hendricks. Not customers. Patrons. Yes, sir. Patrons. And mark this against any rumor you might hear. Miss Abby will not leave. Good afternoon, Abby, my dear. Did you want to see me? Yes, I do. Well, sit down, won't you? Excuse me while I unlock this box. There are a few things in it. I may wish to refer to them. Mr. Green, how much longer are you going to keep me here? Oh, you wish to leave? You know I do. I've been here for months, and you said that if I just... One moment, my dear. Let me see how your account stands. I told you that when you paid me $12,000, I'd hand you your brother's confession of murder. But I have paid off the $12,000, Mr. Green. I know I have. And in addition to the salary you pay me, I've had lots of presents from winners who fancied I'd brought them luck. Mm -hmm. Let me see your account. Mm. Oh, you've paid well over $12,000. Then give me that confession and let me go to the West to join my mother and father. There are some items here, my dear. For example... Your board and the rooms you live in. But I'm not living here because I want to. You make me stay here. Why, I haven't been out of this place without Mrs. Drake since I came here. Now here are other items. The gowns I've bought so you'd make a beautiful appearance. You... Oh, you... And, of course, the salary I pay Mrs. Drake to serve as escort and chaperone for you. I have to charge you for her services. But I don't want her. Why, I'd be delighted if I were allowed to leave here alone. Go where I please when I'm not working. The total of these expenses comes to... $10,500. What? So you have paid off about 2000 on your brother's debt. Oh, you beast. You scheming thief. Oh, my dear Abby. I won't stay any longer. I'm leaving here at once. As for my brother, Robert, he... he it's can... not only your brother, my dear. If he were to hang for murder, what of your mother? Oh, oh there now. There's nothing to be gained by tears. Just be a good girl and sing your prettiest, huh? <laughs> well, I want you to be the honor guest at our masquerade. Ah, that'll be a gala occasion. The blades of all the South will be here. And it comes off next month. You rang the bell, Mr. Green? Yes, Mrs. Drake. Miss Abby will go to her rooms now. I think she needs a little nap before we open for the evening. Come along, Miss Abby. You needn't go with me. I... I can go from here upstairs without you. Very well. Go along, then. I want to speak to Mr. Green. Keep a sharper watch than ever on her. If she wants to leave, she might run away. <laughs> She'll get no chance. Has she written any more letters? Yes. Here's one she wrote today. To her father again. Well, leave it with me. Here's a letter I prepared. Give her this one. From her father. All right. I'll just read the letter she wrote and then write another in her name to send to her father. If she ever learns the truth that none of her letters reached her folks out west or that you rewrote all the letters that come from it's them... It's up to you, Mrs. Drake, to see that she never learns the truth. Because if she does, you will be taken to the balcony. Remember that. Singing while her heart was breaking, Abby realized that the safety of her brother rested only in her willingness to continue as the toast of the golden horseshoe. Enmeshed by the schemes of ruthless Hamilton Green, she had no contact with the outside world or with her parents in the West. Letters they received, supposedly from her, were the work of Hamilton Green. Well, what else does Abby say, Pa? How about the big party your boss is going to have next month? I guess the party will be a humdinger, Bob. She tells how all the finest young gents in the South will be there. And it's fancy dress, a masquerade. Oh, I sure wish I could be there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> pa, do you mean that? I could run the ranch without your help for a while. You could get the stage from Larimore and be at St. Louis in almost no time. Do you good, son, to get back where you know some people. Oh, I'd like to see this fellow that hires, Abby. From what she says, he must be a mighty fine gent. Yeah, and mighty rich, too. Hamilton Green. Oh, I'd like to know him. Thank him for all he's done to make Abby a famous singer. Why, she said in the letter that someday he might send her all the way to Europe to study singing. She might go on to the stage. Think of that. Pa, if you're sure you can spare me, I'm going to St. Louis. You go ahead, son. 
You just make your plans to go ahead. I'll take you to town in the buckboard in time to get the stage. Well, I'll have to get my dress suit out of the trunk. Oh, golly, it'll be great to wear it again. I like the West, and I'm glad we came, but it sure will be nice to be back among old friends again. A couple of weeks later, Bob was in Laramore, waiting for the stage for the East. He was in a gay mood, ready money in his hip pocket, buying drinks for acquaintances in the cafe. And here's to Bob's mighty fine sister, and I hope we'll hear from her on the concert stage. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Bob, I sure hope you like Hamilton Green as well as Abby does. What was that name? Hamilton Green. Why, stranger, do you know him? I've heard of him. Well, you better not say anything against him, stranger. He's one of the finest men in old St. Louis. Is he? You bet he is. Is that the man who owns a golden horseshoe? Yes, that's where my sister works. He's having a great big masquerade party in her honor. Oh? Here's the stage. Come on, Bob, the stage is here. I've got your bags. Oh, 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 Tell you all about it when I get back. Give my regards to St. Louis. Have a good time and uh, bring me back some picture cards. <laughs> you bet I will. Bye, Bob. Bye. Bye. No one noticed the stranger who left the town on a white horse. But as he rode, the stranger changed his appearance. The battered old black hat he wore went into a saddlebag. In its place, he donned a clean white Stetson. From beneath his shirt, he drew a mask, which he fixed in place across his eyes. It was the Lone Ranger who rode to join his companions, Tonto and Dan Reed, in camp. Oh, Silver, steady, boy, steady, Silver. Hello. Oh, what matter? You ride plenty hard. Did someone chase you when you left town? No, Dan, steady, big fella. Pack our duffel. Uh, are we pulling stakes so soon? Yes. But I thought the plan was to spend a few days here to rest up. That was the plan. Oh, here, Dan. You roll blanket. Yeah, sure thing. Me pack other things. Steady there, Silver. I know, big fellow, but we've got to move. Oh, he got scout loaded. Well, where do you think we're going, Tonto? Oh, me not know, Dan. When Lone Ranger ready, him tell us. Here, pack this too, Dan. Right. Tonto, do you remember that gambler we tangled with a year ago? Um, we tangled with plenty, fella. This one was named Hamilton Green. Green? Oh, him worse than coyote. Him worse than buzzard. Him rotten all through. Golly, Tonto. Me like to get hand on throat of green. Me take him like me take stick and do this. And throw him away. Green him skunk. Great day. I never saw Tonto get so mad at the mention of a man's name. Where, Green, now? In St. Louis. And we go there. We get him for keeps this time. Here, Dan, you pack this. Put this in Sogan. This in saddlebag. Right. Now, me tie it. You feel canteen. Golly, Tonto, I'm working as fast as I can. Take it easy, Tonto. We've a mighty long trip before we get to St. Louis. And this time, Green not get way. Me fix him this time. I thought he learned a lesson. It seems he hasn't. What's he done? Me go get rest of Duffel. Dan, Hamilton Green is to blame for the death of one of Tonto's dearest friends, an Indian princess. He made her think she was singing in his cafe to earn money to buy freedom for her father, whom she thought was a prisoner. Oh. And all the time, her father was eating his heart out because he thought his daughter was dead. Well, he finally died. When this girl learned the truth, she refused to take any more food. She starved herself to death. And that's the same man that's in St. Louis? Yes. I'd heard of the Golden Horseshoe, a gambling palace in St. Louis. But I didn't know that Hamilton Green was the one who owned it. But how did Green get away after what he did? He was tarred and feathered and ran out of the West. Oh, you weren't on hand? No. Tonto and I heard about it later on. Tonto vowed that he'd avenge his friend if he ever found Green. You better keep a mighty sharp watch on him. Tonto? Yes, sir. He's likely to forget your rules and kill. I'll keep an eye on him. Oh, you ready? You ready to start east? We'll be in a couple of seconds, Kimosabe. There. Victor's all packed. Any big fella? Run up then, Dan. We'll cover as much ground as we can before darkness. I want to be sure we reach St. Louis ahead of Bob. Who? A fine young fellow is going to see Green, thinking he's honest. Get him up, scout! Golly, Tonto isn't waiting. Come on, Victor! Come on, Silver! Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Days went by, days in the saddle and nights with only the shortest hours of sleep, while the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan drew ever closer to St. Louis. Meanwhile, Bob counted the miles that unreeled beneath the wheels of the rumbling stage that took him near his sister. He wrote a letter and sent it on ahead by Pony Rider. It was addressed to Abby, but like all mail addressed to her, it was intercepted by Mrs. Drake and... This one came by Pony Express, Mr. Green. Hmm. Well, we'll just see who is sending her mail in that high-priced way. Where is the girl? Abby's in her room. You locked the door when you left her? Of course, I always do. Can't take chances. She might run away in the spur of the moment without pause to consider what it means to her brother and her mother and father. Well. What's the matter? This letter's from Abby's brother. Her brother? Yes. The one she thinks is a killer? Yes. But she has heard from him before, hasn't she? Why are you so upset about it now? He's coming here. Oh, when? He's on the way. The stage will arrive in a day or so. That's easy then. Meet the stage and... He's coming to the masquerade party. He says he will register at the St. Louis Hotel as soon as he arrives. He'll expect word from her when he gets there. It's going to be hard to handle, Mr. Green. Naturally, she'll want to see him before the ball, won't she? Yes, she will want to. If she knows he's in the city. And he'll expect to see her. I'll fix it. I'll fix it so he is a murderer. I have an idea already. And when I've worked out the details, it'll be a great idea. By the time Bob arrived in St. Louis and went to the St. Louis Hotel, the Lone Ranger had been in his camp near the city for several hours. Bob didn't notice the Indian who lounged near the hotel entrance or the boy who sat near the desk inside. If he had he would have probably understood how the tall stranger who wore a mask learned the location of his room for the midnight visit. Who is it? Please open the door. I want to speak to you. Just a minute. Mask. Inside, Bob. See here, what's the idea? Who are you? I had a time getting in here. I had to watch my chance to pass through the lobby and up the stairs. Well, I should think you might. Now, if this is a robbery... You think it's worse than a robbery. What do you want of me? You came here for the masquerade, didn't you? Yes. Now, what did you plan to wear? Now, that's none of your business. Say, there's something familiar about you. Have we met? Not exactly. I've heard your voice. There might be other voices like it. Is that letter on the table from your sister? Yes, but confound... Please be assured you'll understand this later on. I want to see that letter. Why, you... Give me that. Stay where you are. No, Steady. So, you know, wear what your sister suggests. Yes, Told her I'd have doggone little chance to get a fancy costume, so, well, she told me to wear my tail suit and a sword and a mask and appear as a fencing master. Sorry, but you'll have to be disappointed. What do you mean? My friends are waiting for you outside that window. I have a rope to let you down. Why, you're Sorry, Bob, but this has to be done. No, let go of me. Are you struggling? Take that rope off me. Let go of me. Out the window you go. No. Cut it below. Uh, be ready. Here he comes. Help! Help! Come quick! Up there. Uh, help! help. Uh, Take him away. What's going on there? Open this door. Get him up, Scout. Don't try that again. Open this door. I say, Bob, The Lone Ranger, alone in the room, stripped off his mask and hat and quickly pulled Bob's dressing gown about his clothes. He kicked off his boots, then opened the door. Beneath the mask, his face had been made to look something like Bob's. Oh, I heard the yelling. What was it? What went on? It's all right now. Uh, perhaps those people had the wrong room. Well, I heard shots. Oh, yes. I threw a couple of shots out the window as they rode away. No one hurt? Oh, no, no. It's quite all right. If you want, I'll call now, Please her. forget the whole matter. If they return, I'll take care of them. In camp, Bob's rage leaped to new heights when he heard Tonto say, You stay here too, maybe three days. I'll kill all of you for this. What's the idea anyway? Who are you? Oh, me, Tonto. Oh, who was that masked man? Why did he do this? What's he got against me? I guess you can blame Hamilton Green for this. What? Hey, who are you? My name is Dan. I'm just a friend of the masked man. If I don't get an explanation of this, no, I... No, you not do anything. You stay here. Fellow with mask go to masquerade. Him wear your clothes. My clothes? Ah, him take your place. Maybe save you plenty trouble. Drake, in a little while, I guess, will begin to arrive at the masquerade. I know it, Mr. Green. You'll have to be especially watchful tonight. I don't want Abby to have any chance to talk to her brother. No, sir, I'll see that she doesn't. 
He'll be here dressed as a duelist. I wanted him to wear a sword for a very definite reason. Yes? I've arranged for Gideon to get into an argument with him. It'll be harsh words, even threats. Gideon? You trust him? <laughs> oh, no, Mrs. Drake. I do not trust Gideon. I know for a fact that he's been stealing from me consistently for these past many months. And yet you want I to... have a reputation, Mrs. Drake. No man has crossed me and gotten away with it. Gideon is going to die for his thievery. But it will be Abby's brother who will be blamed for the death. Oh. Gideon will argue with this fellow Bob. Then later in the evening, there will be another argument in this office. Gideon will be put to death at the point of a sword. <laughs> That's why you have that sword. Yes, and I can use it. Ah, uh, it's a good blade. Flexible, sharp, perfectly balanced. I'll ring the bell. Attendants will come to find Bob accused by me of murder. Until then, you must be sure that Abby doesn't have the chance to speak to her brother lest she learn that to date I have nothing whatsoever against him. I understand, Mr. Green. Good. For the present, that's all. Gideon, the young fellow just arrived. Best, of course. Of course. There he is with the full dress and the sword. Good. I'll speak to him. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Golden Horseshoe. Good evening. If you name the game of your choice, I'll show you where you can be accommodated. Oh, there's no hurry, is there? Hurry? <laughs> of course there's not. But soon the tables will be crowded. I thought that... I, uh, I'd like to look around a bit. Do you mind? Mind? What? No. I'd also no. like to meet your singer, Miss Abbey. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Green's orders. She's resting as not to be disturbed. If you wait a little while, look around our place. Suppose uh, you show me around. Yes, yes, delighted. Come this way first. I think we will look first at the uh, upper floor. Oh, but those are private living quarters. I and... said we would first go upstairs. What do you understand? A threat, sir. And they inspected those who came here to be sure there were no weapons. They overlooked my sword as part of my costume and my fists as part of me. Upstairs, Gideon. You know my name. You've been with Green a long time. But, but you take me to Miss Abby's living rooms. But Mr. Green will... You can deal with Mr. Green later. I am your immediate problem. Don't try to raise your voice. Please, sir, let go of my neck. I know who you are. Oh? Well, you're Miss Abby's brother, sir. Now, surely you want her to finish her nap before the long evening that's ahead, don't you? No. Uh, that is Miss Abby's door, sir. I'll knock. A uh, gentleman to see Miss Abby. He's quite insistent. What's the matter, Gideon? You're at the wrong... What is it? All right, you get in there. Green, get back there. I'll fix no, it. No, you won't. Don't get in there with Green. Gideon, your gun. No, no, stay out. Abby, I'm coming in. Rick, get him, your gun. I'll take that gun. Who, who are you? Abby, where are you? No, no, you're not my brother. You're not Bob. Now listen to me. Green will have a dozen men at this door in a moment. Green, Green, he has my gun. You be quiet. Get over here, Abby, in case they fire through the door. But now listen I... to me. I know Green from a long time ago. Why do you stay here? I can't see that it is any business of yours, sir. Who are you? Unlock this door. Open the door or we'll smash it down. Mr. Green, Abby, I... Abby, listen to me for a minute. Your brother is just outside of town. No, no, you lie. He said he wasn't able to come That's here. That's not what he wrote you. He wrote and told you he would be here. Oh, please go. If you Abby, only knew... if your brother were here and learned that you've been kept against your will, he... He would understand. I, I'm doing it for him. But why? Oh, for the last time, open this door. Listen to me. Time is very short. What does Green hold over you as a threat? He... Oh, I don't know what you say. There is a threat. Yes. Believe me when I tell you, whatever it is, it's not true. I'm going to take you to your brother. But why didn't Bob come here? If he had, he might have killed Green when he learned the truth. But he already... Green's was... made you think he's already wanted for murder, is that it? That's the truth. And if she doesn't behave, her brother will hang. Her brother won't hang. Come, we'll go out that window. It isn't far to the ground. You'll see your brother. I... I will go with you. But that window, no, they... They saw to it that I'd never escape that way. It's a long drop. A moat at the bottom. Are you ready to shoot him? Come, we'll go through Green's men. Stay close behind me. Lead the way. We're coming through. Get him! The critics are from Drake, it's never loaded. All right, then, take the gun. And I still have a sword. As the Lone Ranger charged into the crowd of employees, they at first fell back. Then several drew guns and tried to bring these into play. The fast-moving blades, scintillating with the light of hundreds of lamps, flashed like lightning in the skilled hands of the masked man. He disarmed the nearest man. Green yelled from somewhere in the background. Shoot him! Shoot you fool! Shoot him! 
One gun barked, but over the Lone Ranger's head. That's the last from that gun. My arm! Come, Abby, down these stairs. More armed men rushed up from below. Over this balcony. There he goes. Get him. Jump, Abby. It isn't far. Look out. That man at the door has a rifle. So I see. Oh! The Lone Ranger threw the sword across the hall. It struck the shoulder of the rifle. This way, come. I, I'm with you. We'll make it, Abby. Stop where you are. Not tonight. Oh. One more door and we're out of the place. Free. My horse is over here. Come. They'll be firing from every window. That's the start. Here's Silver. <laughs> it isn't far to my camp. Bob will be there. Now, up you go. They're firing, as you said. That big fella. They won't hit us now. Come on, Silver. to think of the way I believed that, Kirk. I, I knew your hot temper, and he made me so certain that he had proof of a murder. Well, Abby, he would have had proof of a murder if the Lone Ranger hadn't gone to the palace in my place. I'd surely have killed someone. The Lone Ranger? Yes, where is he? Well, he and his friend said they'd leave the camp to us. It's a good place to stay until tomorrow. And tomorrow we can see the Lone Ranger. Oh, Bob, I, I must see him. The way he fought with sword and fist, and the way he acted... Oh, he was magnificent. I, I've got to see him. Tomorrow, Abby, we'll have the law on Hamilton Green and all his crooks. But the Lone Ranger... Oh, I'm afraid, my dear sister, you'll not see him again. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.